guys, thanks for watching another movie review here at Cinematics. I'm your host, Jordan Ross, and today I'm reviewing Annihilation. Now, for those who haven't seen it, this film follows a biologist, played by Natalie Portman, who volunteers to go on a dangerous expedition into the Shimmer, an area where this strange event is happening that results in a complete disregard for the laws of nature as we know them. If Interstellar and Mother had a baby, you'd get Annihilation. This is Alex Garland's follow-up to his directorial debut, Ex Machina, one of the best sci-fi films of the 21st century, and Annihilation is right there in that same category. Garland has been working in the sci-fi genre for a long time as a screenwriter. He wrote 28 Days Later, Sunshine, Never Let Me Go, and Dread, before moving into directing. But now that he's got two films under his belt, I think it's safe to say that he has a knack for it. He's easily one of the most exciting directors working today. It's really fun to see these guys that were protégés of other directors break away and have success on their own. As you can see, Garland frequently worked with Danny Boyle early in his career. It's easy to see why they worked so well together and complemented each other, but they also have such distinct tones and styles, which is why they're so successful on their own as well. Much like J.A. Bayona and Guillermo del Toro, or Charlie Kaufman and Spike Jones, or Matthew Vaughn and Guy Ritchie. Anyway, Annihilation is a total mind F, and it completely blends several genres, which is pretty fitting considering the fact that the idea of merging things together is a pretty big part of this movie. Annihilation has certain aspects of sci-fi exploration, horror, survivor thriller, and mystery. This movie is like a weird, amazing LSD-triggered dream. It's stunning, captivating, mind-blowing, and relentless. Even when you're not entirely sure what's happening, you remain completely invested, and you feel like you're right there with the characters. It's a very intense and visceral experience. Anyway, the performances are great. This is a female-driven film with a mostly female cast, and they're all incredible. These actresses took these characters that Garland had already written as strong and complex and elevated them. None of them are generic or cliched. They're all vastly interesting, and any one of them could have easily been the star of this movie. Natalie Portman's performance was at the same level as Amy Adams in Arrival, and she carries this film beautifully. But the real scene-stealers of this movie were Tessa Thompson and Gina Rodriguez. All three of those actresses deserve their own action franchises. I'd love to see either Thompson or Portman take over for Thor eventually, and Gina Rodriguez has been campaigning to play America Chavez for a long time, so make it happen, Marvel. She's right. I, I really don't know how much more right she has to be. Anyway, we truly are living in a golden age of sci-fi. Studios are making these challenging, original, and incredibly ambitious sci-fi films and giving them huge budgets. I mean, they're actively funding 2001 A Space Odyssey type movies. I mean, it's a really exciting time. Ex Machina, Arrival, Blade Runner 2049, Annihilation. These are arguably all-time classics that people will be discussing and dissecting for years to come. One common thread that sets all of these movies apart is that they give the audience a little bit of credit, which is refreshing. They don't feel the need to explain every little plot point and tie up every loose end. They make you work things out for yourself and oftentimes leave questions unanswered. That adds some mystery and a level of realism to these stories. In real life, if we came in contact with aliens or robots or interdimensional beings or artificial intelligence, they wouldn't think like us. Their logic and motives would be completely different. So it makes sense that in these movies, we never fully understand why certain things happen. Their rules and way of life are different than our own. And that level of ambiguity is one of the main reasons that these films stick with you. You'll be thinking about them long after you leave the theater. And Annihilation definitely accomplishes that. It's expanding. In a few months, the area will have grown to where we are. And then we're talking cities, states, and so on. So 
So I give it 8.5 out of 10 stars, and I definitely recommend seeing this one in theaters, and make sure it has a great sound system, because that's even more important for this movie than the size of the screen. Anyway, have you seen Annihilation yet? What did you think of it? What did you think of my review? Let me know in the comment section. Also, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and follow me on all of my social media accounts, which you can find in the description section below. Thanks again for watching this movie review here at Cinematics. Until next time, I'm your host, Jordan Ross. Thank you.